Hi guys, welcome back to module four, our fourth workshop in the Dublin Academy of Education's Personal Development Club, uh, myself, David Lewis, and, and Chris Lauder. This module today is how to break, how to face your fears and break through them. So everything we've done so far is kind of built up to this moment. This is the, this is the one moment where no longer are we just talk, going to talk about words, no longer, if you remember back to a why model, are we just going to have uh, something in our heads or something that we're thinking about doing. This is where we're going to start to actually physically doing stuff. And this for me is the most exciting module so far. So uh, without further ado, Chris, would you like to start taking us through what Perfect. today's gonna be about? Yeah, I'll kick things off. So personal development. We have spent the last three modules covering some very important topics. We covered goal setting, number one. We then covered morning routines in number two. And in the third module, we covered how to build those strong habits, okay? Now the fourth module, is how to overcome fears, okay? It's how to, to be exact, it's how to face your fears and to break through, okay? And I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that the most difficult part of personal development is overcoming fear, okay? What the only thing that's stopping you from becoming the person you are now to the person that you wanna become is fear. It's fear of the action you have to take in order to do that, okay? And what we're gonna do in today's session is three things, okay, relating to fear. We're gonna cover number one is to understand what fear is, okay? We're gonna start with a definition of fear. We're gonna set the scene here, okay? And that's always a great place to start, okay? The second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna understand how you overcome fear. So once you understand it, we're gonna tell you, well, how do we overcome it? How do we break through fear? Okay, and we're gonna use a very important model for that called the expansion of our comfort zone. Okay, and the final thing we're gonna do is we're gonna address one fear for you that's holding you back, and we're gonna help you put a plan in place to face that fear. Okay, now, what's very important is remembering back to our why model, okay? You can probably see it up on screen now with the magic of uh, editing, okay? It's probably somewhere over here. Great, right. okay, in that why model, you're gonna see we always start with why, okay? That's right in the center, in the core. Once we have our why, our purpose, we then build our vision around that why, okay? I, we, what we see for our future, okay? We make that as clear as we can. Then we've got around that, we build our goals, which are the milestones that we set our, for ourselves in order to make that vision and that why come to reality. Now the thing about those three things is you can do those sitting on your backside with a pen and paper in the comfort of your home, okay? But the real difference comes when you start to take action. And the thing between your goals and action, the thing that's stopping you from taking that action is fear, okay? Fear is the thing that's holding you back from doing what you know you must do in order to achieve whatever the goals you have, the vision you want to create, and the why you want to realize, okay? So we're going to address those, those fears, okay? Now, on page three of your notes there, you're going to see uh, probably my favorite character of all time, Homer Simpson, giving some what we call useless advice, okay? Uh, the saying things like, you'll be fine, relax, calm down, all useless, and it's a waste of time, okay? today is not about that. We're not gonna say, guys, you know, if you ever get scared, just, just breathe and take it easy and, 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 and say to yourself, everything will be okay, okay? I, like, you know, for example, if someone ever told you to, to calm down, like, if someone goes, well, you just calm down, relax. Has anyone ever in the history of the universe calmed down once someone had told them to calm down? No, okay, because that's a useless piece of advice. Today is about giving you practical, actionable steps that you can take tools you can use for when you face fear. So when fear turns its ugly head up on you, you can challenge it and you can overcome it. So it's all about practicality, okay? We're gonna give you a process you can follow to overcome your fear. Remember, personal development is a process of continually improving your life skills. A process is a series of action steps you take in order to achieve an outcome. So we're gonna give you that process to overcome fear. So on page four there, we're gonna start off with a definition of fear, okay? So you wanna write this in. Fear is an unpleasant emotion which is caused by a perceived threat of pain, danger, or harm. Let's write that down, okay? First thing is, it's an emotion, so you feel it, okay? It's an emotion like happiness, sadness, anger, fear is also one of those, okay? But the key word in that definition is, it's an unpleasant emotion caused by a perceived threat. 
perceived being the key word there. Perceived means the way you see something. Okay? Now the way people see things, people can look at the exact same object and see it very differently. And fear is no different. People have completely different fears. Fears aren't constant across the board. Everybody has different fears. For example, some people are afraid of heights and some people love jumping out of planes. Okay? That just, like, just proves to you that fear is all about perception. And today what we want to do is we want to address your perception of the things that you're afraid of because that's something that we can control. That's something that we can change. Okay? Good. Now, you might be thinking, well, why do we experience fear in the first place? What's the purpose of fear? Well, first of all, our most basic human instinct is survival, okay? Mother nature wants us to survive so we can pass on our genetics to the next generation. Now, that isn't just, doesn't just happen by accident, okay? Mother nature has programmed this emotion into our bodies called fear. And fear's purpose is to keep us alive. Okay, that's what fear is. It's to alert you to anything that might hurt you, harm you, kill you, cause any kind of negative impact on you. That's what fear is. Fear is like, uh, you know, a signal going off in your head to say, whoa, okay, be careful of something here. That's what fear is. It has a purpose. And today is not about eliminating fear. Be very clear. By the end of this session, you're not just not going to be afraid of anything. That would be irresponsible. Fear is very important, it serves a purpose, okay? Removing fear from your, your, your brain would be like taking the house alarm off your house, okay? Every time it goes off, okay? It's serving a purpose, it's telling you that something's wrong, okay? What we wanna do today is though, is when, you're when you feel fear, we wanna work on your perception of what that fear is and help you take the appropriate action that's gonna help you get towards your goals, okay? Now, here's something that's quite interesting is, is that scientists have done a study, right? And the study proved that we are not born with all our fears. In fact, we learn most of our fears. There are only two fears we're born with. And they are number one is the fear of loud sounds. And number two is the fear of falling. Every other fear that we have, we learn through our experience of life, okay? We learn via our own, um, you know, experiencing an event ourselves in the first person. For example, when you're a kid and you touch a hot kettle and you get burned or whatever, you'll learn that stay away from hot stuff, okay? That's dangerous, that can hurt you, okay? So you learn to your own experiences or you learn from other people uh, telling you to be afraid of something. Like your parents might tell you, don't play in the road because traffic's dangerous, okay? You don't need to play in the road to find that out. You can be told that and you can develop a fear of busy roads because someone has told you because it's dangerous, okay? So you either experience it or you're told to be afraid of it, okay? So we learn our fears. For example, some people are afraid of clowns, like that's a very common thing. That's because they probably were told by someone that clowns were scary or they were scared by a clown when they went to a circus, okay? Whatever that might be. But the key is here, guys, you all learn your fears. You pick them up over time, okay? And on page five there, what we want you to do is just take a moment, take 30 seconds, take 60 seconds, and list some fears that you've acquired in your lifetime. Think about things you're afraid of. That could be maybe driving. That could be spiders. That could be horror movies, okay? That could be meeting new people. That could be speaking in public. That could be whatever, okay? That could be doing your oral exam. That could be sitting the leaving cert, okay? What are, thing, what are fears you've acquired in your lifetime? Just want to get the juices flowing here. Have a think about things that you're afraid of, okay? Or things that you've learned, okay? So I'll even pause this and just take 60 seconds and do that. Brilliant, okay, so once you've done that, okay, now we're gonna start framing how do we overcome things like that. So for the next thing I wanna say is though, that fear, you'll see it on the page there, dictates the actions you take, okay? So fear is, like I said, it's an unpleasant emotion, but what that, emotion is doing and like all emotions emotions are signals to your body emotions are telling you to do something okay and fear is no different fear is a signal that's telling you to take action okay and the actions it can tell you to take are usually falling into one of these three categories so anytime you're afraid you either number one you face the fear head on and you deal with it okay i want you to write in the word fight Okay, you face the fear and you deal with it. So, for example, a caveman back in the day comes out of his cave, he's got a spear in his hand, he's jumped on by a saber-toothed tiger. He has no time to do anything else but just fight for his life, okay? And that's his instinct, it's just to fight off that saber-toothed tiger, to fight it, okay? Number one, okay? The second response, so let's say that caveman comes out of his cave and he sees the, 
the saber tooth tiger like you know three four hundred meters away you know he goes oh god there's a tiger out there he legs it back into his cave because he's plenty of time he runs away okay so that's what we call the flight response okay so we've all heard of fight or flight okay very simple but the third response is probably the most common response in our modern society is what we call the fright response it's when we do absolutely we, we're, we're, we feel a fear about something and we do absolutely nothing about it we take no action at all and we just complain about it and that's the worst thing you can do if there's something you're afraid of doing but you know you should do it but you don't and all you do is sit around and say oh you know i could never do that that's too scary you know i'm just not that type of person and oh, i would be very worried if i had to do that that's the worst thing you can do if you know you have to do that thing but you just sit around and complain about it and today we're going to show you how you do exactly not that okay how you make sure that you don't end up like that okay brilliant flying here okay one thing we do is we ask the class at this point the question we say do you think that all fears are reasonable do you think all fears are legitimate and I think at, the, at this point you can realize now, you know, the answer is no. We have what we call reasonable fears and unreasonable fears. And uh, we, we always ask the class when we're talking about this to do a bit of brainstorming uh, about what reasonable fears actually are. As I said, fear is trying to keep you alive. It's trying to keep you away from physical pain, danger or harm. Fear is important. Okay, fear, as I said, it's a survival mechanism. Okay, it's important. Okay, there are things in life you should genuinely be afraid of. Things like, uh, you know, lions, kidnappers, uh, being robbed, uh, dangerous spiders that can kill you or snakes. They're things you should be afraid of, okay? Absolutely genuinely. But there is this other category of what we call our unreasonable fears. Things that you should not be afraid of. Things that by being afraid of them, they're not benefiting you in any way, shape or form. Things like exams, uh, things like meeting new people, Things like, and this is the biggie guys, public speaking. Believe it or not, the number one fear universally, worldwide, and studies were done on this, the number one fear above death is public speaking. Above death, people are more afraid of public speaking than they are of dying. And that is a fact. That was a study that was done. It's hard to believe, but it's, 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 it's the truth. The number one fear of the average person is public speaking. Okay, is that reasonable? Why are people so afraid of public speaking? Or why, why do people experience these unreasonable fears like exams, meeting new people, um, you know, as I said, public speaking? Why are people afraid of these things? Well, it's by understanding why you're afraid of these things that can help you overcome them. So that's what we're going to do here. There are three reasons why you experience unreasonable fears. And the first one, the first reason you experience unreasonable fear is because you are worried you're going to be judged by other people. That's it. You're afraid of being judged by other people. That's why you're afraid of public speaking. That's why you're afraid of the, doing exams. That's why you're afraid of uh, meeting new people, learning new skills. You're afraid you'll be judged, judged negatively. And uh, why is that the case? Well, this kind of goes back to the caveman days and uh, it, it's, it's been pre-programmed in us to want to be accepted by people, okay? The reason is human beings are tribal animals. We thrive when we form communities because we're able to communicate, we're able to work together as a team. Uh, humans have become the dominant force on the planet, okay? And part of that survival mechanism is acceptance by other people. Now, when you're young, okay, you look to your parents and your, your guardians and your relatives for your values and for, you know, for approval. And more often than not, you get a lot of that, and that's fine, okay? And when you're a kid, you're, you're, all you're looking for is them to say, yeah, that's okay, that's good, okay? But when you start to become a teenager, okay, you start to look outside your family for those values, for that approval, you know, for new learnings. You start to look for your, your peer group for those things. And you start to become more aware of what other people think of you. And you start to value their opinion, because if they don't accept you, then that's going to go against your survival instinct. And you, as, as a result of that, want them to like you. And the key to this is that because of that, human beings tend to avoid situations where they could be judged in a negative way. I.e., if they had to meet new people, what if they don't make a good impression? So they just stay away from that. You know, I'd rather not do the thing I have to do because what if the outcome's, you know, not good? What if I get judged negatively? So I won't do the public speech I have to make because the audience might not like me. I'd rather not do it at all than to do it and risk uh, having people judge me in a negative way. 
Okay, so that's the first reason why we have unreasonable fears, being risk being judged by others. The second reason we have unreasonable fears is because we have a lack of certainty for the outcome. I, we don't know what the outcome is exactly going to be. And as human beings, we love knowing exactly what's coming next. Again, another survival instinct. We like to have certainty about what's going to happen. For example, uh, have you ever rented, rented, <laughs> have you ever streamed a movie that you've already seen before? Have you ever watched something you've already watched before? Why did you do that? Why did you watch something? You've already seen it. You know what, ha you, you know what happens. Why did you do it? I'll tell you why. Because you were certain that that was going to be a good movie. You were certain that you enjoyed it the last time and you're going to enjoy it again. Because humans love certainty. Okay? And humans hate uncertainty. The fear of the unknown scares us. Because what we don't know could hurt us. And uh, the reason we have these unreasonable fears about public speaking is that what if, you know, I get up there and, you know, what if the outcome, which I don't know what it's going to be, what, you know, it could go anyway. I'm not sure which way it's going to go, so therefore I'm just going to avoid it. So it's this lack of certainty is why we experience these unreasonable fears. We've never done it before. We don't know what's going to happen. The third, then, reason we have these unreasonable fears is because we have this sense that we might lose something. We might lose something by doing activity that we're scared of doing. We might lose the respect of others. We might lose uh, respect for ourselves. We might lose the acceptance for, from the group. We might lose something financially. You know, for example, if someone was uh, in, in a job, you know, in the future, and for you guys, and you were asked to do a presentation at work, and you did a bad job, but and you you bombed, and your boss said that was terrible, you really let us down. You lose your, you'd be where you might lose your job. Okay, so it's that sense of loss is the reason that we often don't, uh, you know, face our unreasonable fears. Okay, and it's those three reasons, being judged by others, the lack of certainty of the outcome, and the sense of loss, that all of those reasons start to form a story in our mind. We start to tell ourselves a story as to why we can't do something. You know, I could never go into a room full of people I don't know and introduce myself and get to know people because I'm just not that type of person. I'm not a confident person. You know, they might judge me in a negative way. You know, I'm not certain what they're going to think of me. You know, what if they don't like me? And, um, you know, when I could lose, you know, respect, respect to the room, you know, they could think I'm not, not cool or accept me. And all of those kind of reasons start to form a story. Uh, and that story becomes the evidence that you use to not do something. And fear, uh, as, as, as is well, well known, can stand for false evidence appearing real. So all this evidence that you have, all these stories you tell yourself become the evidence and become the vision in your mind as to if I try and do this thing, this terrible thing is going to happen. Okay guys? And nothing could be further from the, from the truth. Okay? So that's part one. Part one is all about just understanding what fear is, getting to grips with you know, what, what its purpose is and understanding you know, that we have these reasonable and unreasonable fears. Okay? Now we want to talk about uh, how do we overcome the unreasonable fears? What can we do to actually break through these fears? Okay, now this part here is all about understanding how do we overcome fear? Okay, and the way you overcome fear, it's really, really simple. Is, is one word can sum it up, is exposure. If you want to overcome a fear, you have to expose yourself to the thing you're afraid of. Now, the key to this is though, is micro exposure small doses of the thing you're afraid of at a time and building up to bigger exposures, okay? If you were to ever get, I'm sure lots of people have, if you get a vaccine, a vaccination, an injection in your arm for whatever, uh, really what's happening there is they are injecting you with the virus you're trying to defend from. They're actually giving you the virus in the injection there. Why are they doing that? Well, the reason they're doing that is if you have a small dose of the virus in your bloodstream, your body goes, oh, Jesus, you know, there's something foreign here that we need to fight off. And it produces the antibodies to fight that virus and to kill it. And the reason it does that is because your body gets used to producing those antibodies. And the next time it actually faces that virus in the real world, your body knows what to do because it's done it before. And it's going to be very, very good at fighting off that disease. The same works for something you are afraid of. If you have small exposures to it over time, you are going to get more used to dealing with it. And then if you build those up slowly but surely, you are going to be able to overcome any fear that you might have. Now, again, through the magic of uh, video editing, you can probably see on the side of me here, there's going to be a diagram, right? And this diagram is going to represent the expansion of our comfort zone, right? So 
the best way to use this is the best way to illustrate this is to give you an example about how I overcame fear. Okay, it was through uh, there was something that I was terrified of. I was like one of those billions of people who was terrified of public speaking. I absolutely hated it. Okay, but I knew that if I wanted to achieve my goals in life, I had to conquer that fear and I had to make public speaking something I wasn't not only not afraid of, but something I loved, something I absolutely thrived on, something that I sought out when I when you know any time an opportunity came up to do it, I jumped at it. Okay, so I had to overcome the fear. How did I do that? Well, on the diagram there, you're going to see a dot in the middle. That dot represents me. Okay, the circle around that dot represents my comfort zone. Okay, now. If I was asked to tie my shoelaces, okay, and you'll see on the screen there, the little X that's come up, that's basically a task that lies within my comfort zone, okay? The big circle is my comfort zone, a task that I've done before many times I'm not afraid of, sits within that, no problem at all. But if someone asked me to speak in front of 500 people at a conference, back when I was afraid of public speaking, that would have been way outside my comfort zone, miles outside it, and I wouldn't have gone near that. I would have said, I'm not that type of person, I've never spoken before, what if people judge me, what's the outcome gonna be? I could lose respect of people, I could just, I could make a balls of it, okay? And I would be terrified to do that, okay? And I wouldn't have done it, okay? But I knew that I had to overcome this fear, so I did a bit of research on it, right? And I discovered this expansion of your comfort zone theory, changed my life, absolutely changed my life. And essentially, just like the, the vaccination, I gave myself a little bit of the fear, okay? What I did was, I did something I'd never done before, which is, I sat down, I wrote a speech, and I said it out loud in front of the mirror. It was weird, I'd never done it before, it was a little bit uncomfortable and strange, it was outside my comfort zone, but only slightly outside my comfort zone. And once I did that, I was like, wow, that was actually pretty easy. But the magic was, my comfort zone then grew. My comfort zone grew to, uh, it, basically to take into account that task that I'd just done. That's something I was no longer afraid of doing. Then I asked a friend of mine just to listen to me say a speech, just one person, and I'd say it to them. And again, that was outside my comfort zone. I'd never done that before. And you know, I was a little bit nervous. I was worried that they might think it was crap, but I did it anyway. And it actually wasn't that bad. And then once I realized that, my comfort zone grew, that it was actually fine. Then I asked at, you know, five of my mates, you know, will you listen to this speech that I've prepared? And then I'd be nervous, I'd be panicking, you know, five people, got more than one, and I'd do it, no problem. You know, I realized that I had nothing to be worried about. Then I actually had a thing I had to speak at where there were 25 people in it. I was so nervous, I was panicking, I was trying to practice loads, and I didn't know what was gonna happen, but I did it. I wasn't great, but I did it. And then my comfort zone grew again. And I slowly but surely worked up to speaking in front of 500 people, which I did about two years ago. And uh, now my comfort zone is well within, you know, is well, well capable of taking any kind of talk into account. I would happily do it. But I have to remember that one time I wasn't. I was terrified of speaking in public. But the way I did it was, was micro exposure to it. And if you're afraid of anything, be it oral exams, like you have to do for Irish or French or Spanish, okay? That's something that all students are terrified of. Why don't you practice just with a mate of yours and ask them, just only ask questions about uh, things that, you know, like that are about yourself. You know, they're only allowed to ask you about one topic, okay? And then build up then to two topics, then to three topics, then to four topics, and then ask your teacher, you know, could, could you do a mock oral exam? And then ask another teacher, could you do another one? And the whole idea is that you slowly but surely build up more and more expanding your comfort zone uh, to take into account all of these activities that you're once afraid of doing. So, essentially, that is the crux of overcoming your fears. It's micro exposure, it's slowly but surely doing things progressively that are come more and more difficult and scary to do. That's it, cheers. Dave, what do you think? Great, thanks Chris. So what Chris has gone through there is he told us what a fear is and he showed us like how to overcome our fear. Now I'm gonna show you as we do every single week a practical action step that you can do and apply it to your life. We're gonna show you another anagram which is F-A-C-E, so face, how you face your fears. I'm gonna show you how to use it, and I'm gonna give you a task to apply it to something that's going on in your life right now. What I think is massively important that you understand is like, you might not currently think of something as a fear. It might be resistance. It might be that you're just, you're, uh, you're procrastinating about something that you know you should, you know you need to do, and this is how you can overcome it. So you can see on page eight there, we've got find. So actually, look, we'll, we'll go through. So actually find it take action on it, how to cope with things, and then evaluating it at the end. So they're the four steps that you need to be aware of to actually go ahead and face your fear. On page nine, 
first step that we had the students in the in the workshop today do is we wanted them to find and identify a fear or the procrastination or the resistance that they want to overcome. Now Chris has already got your juices flowing earlier with that and you've gone through a couple of them. It says write down three things here. So you can write down three in the class. We actually put it broke it down even further and just said one. If you wanted to pick one right now. As we start to go through this, we're just going to go through it once and you'll get better and better and better and better at facing your fears. So just pick any one now. Okay, and write it down, commit to it. Then it says, now pick one of these fears and describe how it will improve your life if you were to overcome this fear. So potential fears before might have been, as Chris said, meeting people, doing an oral, public speaking, joining a new gym, uh, doing s something you've never done before. But we want you to actually realize yourself in here, how would your life improve if this was gone? If you just click your fingers, fingers and that was gone, you were not scared of it anymore. Okay, so you need to brainstorm that. That is going to be individual. But for example, if it was an oral exam, how could it improve my life in school if I wasn't scared of doing it? Well, not only would I probably do a few more practice rounds in it, well, I wouldn't be scared going into it. I'd take better action. I'd help my friends out with it. I wouldn't be thinking about it the whole time. I wouldn't be losing sleep about it. So there's loads of ways that it can improve my life if I was not scared of doing that. On the next page, on the other side of the sort of seesaw here, it says, describe what you would miss out on if you decided not to overcome this fear. Okay, so what you could miss out on here, again, is like, is the results, is the extra time, is the enjoyment of school, is sleep, loads of different things. And what we want you to weigh up once you've paused the tape here and given this a shot, is we want you to weigh up how the benefits should outweigh the fear. Okay, so you want the, the benefits of actually overcoming it outweigh the scared or the, the thing that's actually holding you back from taking action right now. The, the negatives of not doing it, you know, could outweigh the benefit you might get of just like putting it off. So for example, if you take your leaving search, like you don't have to do it, but I think pretty much if you spend even 10, 15 seconds, you'll see that just doing it and getting it out of the way and giving it your best go, not only from building you, but the results you get from it and moving on to college massively outweigh the, you know, the bit, little bits of work that you have to do to make sure that you're okay to go ahead and do it. So you need to go down and, and set that there. You need to find your fear. And once you've found it, we're gonna actually now start breaking it down to how we can actually go ahead and, you know, overcome it. So that's the first one. It says, remember, start with a small fear and build up the bigger ones. And this is kind of like the comfort zone model that Chris said before. We're not gonna straight away talk about, okay, well, we're gonna speak in front of 500 people, but it's also getting us better at the process of breaking down our fears something very, very small. And then once you get momentum and realize, actually, I'm not scared of that anymore, we can take another one and another one. Okay, step two, commit to taking action. Okay, so what I actually got the students to write down there is action, not words, or action are, is greater than words. I've been to many personal development seminars, I've read and, uh, uh, many books and I've listened to many interviews, and Chris will be the same, of people that continuously just go for the next book, the next seminar, the next hack, the next idea, and they never actually go ahead and do anything about it. This whole workshop is to break through that thing in the comfort zone, that dotted line. So we're going to commit to taking action. And as we alluded to, it doesn't have to be the big massive action at the end, but action towards overcoming the fear. So something to overcome it. So it says the only true way we can truly overcome these fears is to take action and face them head on. So if you're afraid of swimming, swim. If you're afraid of public speaking, speak in public. And if you're afraid of heights, get high up, go up and stand on a chair. It doesn't have to be the biggest thing. So the question underneath then says, why is action the cure to any unreasonable fear? And this is my personal idea on it, why I think action is. Well, I think every time I take action, I get more clarity on the actual task itself, on why I'm actually afraid of it. I turn the chaos and the emotions that we talk about every single day in our mind into something more organized. And as we say a lot, being clear about something, having clarity is actual power, okay? Then it can allow you to actually focus on what can be done now, what you could do, what you would do, what you could bring yourself to do right now to actually just move the needle or expand your comfort zone a little bit more towards what you have to get done. Okay, so once you've gone and done something, you're more aware of it. So maybe you're afraid of joining a, of joining a local gym, committing to a program. Well, that's, that's fair enough because you don't know how long it takes to get to the gym, how you're gonna feel at the end of the day, how you sign up, what the instructor's gonna say to you, how many people are actually going to be there, who's gonna be judging. You've never taken any action. Of course you're gonna be scared of all that, okay? But then it also allows you to notice about what you can do right now. 
Okay, so if you've taken a small, even a tiny bit of action, you can see the next step in front of you. Versus if you're still at home, in your room, trying to brainstorm stuff, you're not gonna get any ideas or anything that's gonna flick you on to the next thing. So that's why it actually, action is the cure. Now how we do it is on page 11. And on page 11, it says, the key to taking effective action towards overcoming your fears to do it in bite-sized, manageable chunks. So I read and I listen to a lot of stuff about Navy SEALs, and it, it, it's not because I'm massively impressed with the, the stuff they do, and I'm not massively into war or anything like that. I am actually, I am really passionate about finding out how they can bring themselves mentally to do such incredibly scary and absolutely amazing challenges. And the thing it keeps coming back to, the way that people actually get through the Navy SEAL program is they only focus on the mile in front of them, the task they're doing now. They're not thinking about all the things they have to do in the next year, not even the next day, not even the next hour. There was a podcast I listened to yesterday and they said that the, the main time that people actually fall out of Navy SEAL school, ring the bell and quit, is on this particular task where they're asked to run around a mile track and they're not told how long they have to go for. And he said, and like my, many of the other uh, Navy SEALs said, if they cannot break that down into the next mile, the next 100 meters, and they're focusing on the potential of all the bad things that it could be, 300 miles, 3,000 miles, three days continuous running, they're focusing on that, they're the people that quit. Okay, and they don't quit because the task is too hard. They don't quit because they've done an incredible amount of miles. It's because they've mentally become overwhelmed. So if we are able to break down something we're scared of into a bite-sized manageable chunk, we can actually hack that. And then they start to add up and they start to grow, like we said, with our comfort zone before. Okay, if you take a, an action step too big, you know, that could actually cause you to get incredibly negative feedback. You would get even more scared and you might not even take the next action. So it's actually really imperative that you do take a small action. So for example, when I first started teaching, my first class was in front of two 14 year old students. Okay, I was scared. If I had gone straight to 500 students, I would have taken action. It wouldn't have been very good. I would have got terrible feedback and I'm very, very unlikely to go ahead and take another next action step to actually start to build momentum. On this, on this page here, we are talking about how to actually drive a car, to learn how to drive a car and do your driving test if you're scared of that. Okay, and it actually breaks it down to really small things and gives you examples there. Okay, what I would like you to do is on the next page, we actually have an idea for it, is take your fear and brainstorm your own set of action steps. It does not have to be uh, driving a car, it does not have to be public speaking, but what can you do going from very, very, very small to the big actual task itself? For example, when I did my driving test, I was not scared of driving. There was no way I was scared of driving. I loved to drive. I was driving, like asking my mum could I drive since I was very, very young. But I was scared to be judged doing the test, something that Chris said earlier. I was scared to actually just get negative feedback on a judgment. So what I did was I actually went out and I booked a couple of practice tests. Then on the day of the test, I went round the route. I practiced all my skills beforehand. I went in and I said to myself, okay, let's break it down even smaller. Let's say, right, what do I have to do? Well, I'm nervous about meeting this instructor who's just a normal, everyday human, like I'm not scared about going to Lidl and buying something off someone else, but I'm scared of this man for some reason. Okay, so I have to go in and meet him, I have to make a good first impression, I have to have a good handshake, I have to answer his questions, then I have to ask his questions about the car, then I have to drive out of the, the uh, exam centre, I have to go do my skills and I have to drive back. Okay, and then he talks to me at the end. So I broke it down to that, and suddenly each one of those things individually was okay. Now when I went and did it, what do you think actually happened? I went in and I did all those things, and I failed the test. So like I failed the first test and that, that was bad. I was a bit upset by that. But then when I went, and did the, I went home and I booked the next test and I did the second one, well, I wasn't scared of doing the test anymore because I'd already done it. Okay, so I was asking what could I do better? And I actually failed that one as well, would you believe? Yeah, okay, but I passed the third one and it was fantastic. Okay. So with every completed task, you will start to build up momentum and confidence. So I can't stress enough, your action step to take away from this is brainstorm little steps that you can have all the way up to your big task. So another way, another hint or another like way that you can do this is brainstorm for me or brainstorm for one of your friends. Pretend they're scared of what you're scared of and do it for them. And you're more likely to actually come up with good answers for somebody else than maybe for you. So if you go back to the oral idea, the, the, the idea I mentioned today is, well, maybe you can go find out how much percent the oral is. That's your first step. Maybe you can realize what the different percentage breakdown, what's the examiner looking for. Maybe you can write out what you're going to say. Maybe you can speak it into your phone. Maybe you can listen to it at nighttime. Maybe you can then say it in front of a mirror to yourself. 
maybe you can actually then ask one of your mates can you can you say it to them maybe then a, a little bit more daunting would be to ask your parents to ask you the french or german and then continue go on ask your teacher do it in front of a couple of people keep going keep going keep going and then it says baby steps to action 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 i can't stress enough how you break through something how you break th uh, break through a fear or anything that's holding you back in any sense is by taking action it's not words it says if you want to conquer fear don't sit at home and think about it go and get busy Okay, for all those reasons we have just described there a second ago. Go and do something. That will separate you from other people who do not do something, who consistently think and consistently plan and then plan again. Go and do something. So as we're doing, going through some action here and as we've discussed how to take action, it's not all going to be, as our mate Rocky Balboa says, sunshine and rainbows. Sometimes you're going to get some negative feedback, as we alluded to when we originally brought the concept in of the why model. So what we have put in here, which you should be just thinking about and discussing with yourself, uh, in this, at the same time as doing the action steps is five coping strategies that you can have. Now, maybe only one of these will work for you. I, I actually firmly believe that three of these are extremely powerful and I've, I've read from feedback and other people that they found, find the other two extremely powerful. So let's go through them. What are they? Well, how can you cope when you get negative feedback and how can you, when you don't feel energetic enough to take the next action step? Part one is ask yourself empowering questions versus disempowering statements. So we've all been trained like, like subconsciously to actually state stuff about ourselves. And what I want you to question on yourself right now is when did you actually define that? When did you define that you are good, not good at maths? When did you define that you did not like public speaking? When did you just, did you just wake up at the age of seven and just say, actually, no, I'm not good at running? Like, no. But for some reason, this has been implanted on your brain through maybe, as Chris said, a learned uh, trait throughout your life, maybe from yourself or from somebody else. So instead of actually saying, I could never, I can't, reframe that and ask yourself, how could I? What if? You know, in, in what way could I potentially do something else? So, for example, like... Uh, what like I have here, like say for your six year holiday, it might be a quite a massive expense. Maybe some of you guys currently do not have a job because you're focusing all your effort on studying for your exams. Well, instead of saying, I can't go on that, maybe start asking yourself, how could I afford to save a five or a week or a 10 or a week? What could I do this weekend that might make me 30 euro? You know, what could I maybe not buy that I buy every single day? maybe a coffee, for example, that I could just put into my bank account. And by asking yourself these empowering questions, you actually trigger your brain and you trigger your reticular activating system to actually start looking for answers. And that is almost like taking action, which will almost maybe uh, open up the next shadow piece, the next idea that you can have. So do not catch yourself saying disempowering statements. Start asking yourself empowering questions. As we always say the quality of your life is the quality of the questions you ask yourself. And in any of my classes here at the academy, that's what I'm always asking students to do, to reframe their inner monologue, to ask themselves, what can I do next? What is the examiner asking for me here? What do I do when I see brackets? What do I do when I see fractions? You ask yourself those questions, you come up with answers versus the overall big picture of saving maybe the 3,000 euro or speaking in front of those five, uh, 500 people. Next part is something really, really powerful, and I only realized how powerful it was when I actually put it up on, uh, on my Instagram last year, just in and around about six weeks before the leaving cert, and the feedback I got off that was, it was genuinely, apart from one other Wim Hof method thing, the, the greatest uh, feedback on anything that I put up, anything maths related or anything, was actually a Tim Ferriss video. So if you look at Tim Ferriss' video, he, he talks about when you're scared of something, writing down the worst case scenario. So if you go ahead and you write down, okay, you're scared of the exam, you're scared of the leaving cert, write down the worst thing that can happen to you. Like worst thing can happen, your grades, what happens on the day, write all that stuff down. And by putting that down on a piece of paper, again, like we always say, it's turning that chaos into something clear, something focused, something that you can see. It turns out it's not actually that bad. You know, it's not going to kill you. You know, worst thing comes, worst thing comes to the worst if, if you mess up uh, on your oral, okay, well, you lose out in like 10%. But probably not, because I don't know what it's worth. If it's worth 15%, maybe you did bad, you still have probably acquired 8%. It's not that big of a deal. So if you check out that Tim Ferriss video, he goes through it in unique detail. I think it could be very, very important. But write down your worst case scenario of the thing that you were scared of. Okay, part three. And I think this is extremely powerful for me. It started to work for me, but it did actually take me a, a good amount of time and practice for this to work. It's visualize and practice being successful in advance. You can actually have practice goals and what your brain 
can't distinguish from full on practice goes by visualizing it by running through the event you will actually start to feel the emotions the better you get it you will see the reaction of people you will see yourself actually speaking in front of you you'll see yourself doing the test if you visualize the event you are talking about it actually runs through your feelings your body doesn't realize the difference and it releases the hormones uh, and then you actually start to see like where maybe there are gaps in your learning, where there are gaps in your knowledge, where you thought potentially you could do a math sum, but you couldn't, you lied to yourself, because the biggest person we lie to most in the world is actually ourselves. We convince ourselves of something. And this actually gives you confidence, and this confidence actually becomes real. And it's actually the opposite of what Chris said earlier about fear, the false evidence appearing real. You actually take like this evidence and you convince yourself it's true. So instead of like putting yourself down on a negative spiral, by visualizing the success through it and getting better and better and better at it, you start to actually develop confidence. Like, like any UFC fighter talks about going through the fight, actually visualizing exactly what's gonna happen, where someone's gonna overreach and when they're gonna knock that person out in 13 seconds. So you have a look at that, give it a shot. It does take a little bit of practice to do. The next part, part four, is a model myself and Chris actually made up, and I love models. I love distilling stuff down into something I can see, and straight away it clicks with me. Uh, so one of the great models we saw in the last workshop was the Habit one. I have that on my wall in my office. This one is crucial too. So you'll see it appearing on the screen here. We have, it's almost like a seesaw. We have certainty and uncertainty on the right-hand side. We have fear increasing and decreasing on the left. And we have found the more certain you get about something, about what you have to do, so say if it was an exam, how it's broken down, what the marking schemes are, what's come up the last number of years, how the examiner rewards marks, where people usually make mistakes, how, how it's sectioned off, the timing for each thing. The more certain you become about that, the less scared you actually are of the event. So say if you're making a speech, if you realize, all right, I have to introduce myself, break it down to four things, have it close, and you know those four things, well, suddenly you become less scared. You understand what room you're saying it in, if you have a microphone or not you become less scared versus when you're uncertain about something that raises your fear levels. You do not know what to expect. So last year, myself and Chris were involved in a, in a public speaking club in the school uh, and a lady came in and she got us to do a role play in front of the class. Now I literally speak all day, every day in front of a class and this didn't, it wasn't even as big as some of the classes and she gave us a, a sentence and it was grand for about a minute. And then I ran out of things to say. It was a role play. And that's what she wanted. She wanted you to practice feeling nervous, okay? I didn't know what to say. I started to become nervous. I got a bit scared. I started, uh, uh, and I started making all these weird hand gestures. But that's just an example. So if you say to yourself, the more certain I get about something, I know that fear is gonna decrease. It doesn't even have to be some of the actions we said before. We just get more knowledgeable. The last one, part five, is focus on the outcome of conquering the fear not what you'll have to go through. Now, some people believe in that and some people believe in a, a, a different way. I like to personally, in terms of a workout, think to myself, well, this is what we're doing right now. This is where our body is. I like to be in that present and just focusing on that one second, that next push up, that next run or whatever it is. But some people like to focus on, okay, well, in half an hour, uh, I'll, I'll be in the shower and I'll be, I'll, I'll be all relaxed then and I'll be having my breakfast. Or some people literally like to say when they have this horrendous, really bad, daunting day in front of them, well, in 10 hours, I'll be in bed. You know, 10 hours I'll be at home. Okay, some people like to focus on that and that spurs them on, that it will not last. The pain or the scared or the fear will not last now. So whatever way you want to flip that yourself. Five coping mechanisms for during action. The last part and the most crucial part after you first take action is evaluate. There's no point in doing the same thing again and again and again and again. You're just going to get the same result. So if you do the same exercise program that hasn't worked, the same study that hasn't worked for an exam, and you're just gonna get the same result, but you're gonna get probably worse results because you'll be frustrated at it not actually working. So we have here evaluate, and we've given you three powerful questions here that will allow you to evaluate. First of all, you ask yourself in a situation, what went well? But also I'd suggest, as we always say, why did it go well? What did you contribute that made that going well? So it might be a maths test you did, what went well? Well, the algebra section went well. Why? Because I looked at all the past paper questions, I saw the trends, I knew what the only things that they could ask, I was certain about it, that's why it went well. What didn't go well? My timing didn't go well. What? Why? Well, because I never actually practiced doing the timing myself. I, I missed out on time at the end and I, I couldn't do my last question, so it was only marked at 80% versus 100%. So what didn't go well and why? And be honest because that's the only way that you can do part three. You can say, what would you do next time? You can take the good stuff, okay, and you can keep it there. You can improve on the bad stuff, 
Uh, and why would you do it? Why would you do it? Because it might get you a different outcome. So for example, well, when I study again, I'm still gonna look at the past paper questions, but I'm gonna look at the marks. I'm gonna divide the, the marks and uh, divide the marks in half and take away two. That's the amount of time I get to spend in the test. I'm gonna set a timer, make sure I can do that question in that time. And if I can't, I'm gonna do it again. Okay, so that's it. That's how you actually face your fears. So we said you, you find them, you take action while coping with them, and then you evaluate what, evaluate what you've done, and you go again, and you go again, bouncing back to the why model, action, feedback, action, feedback, using this. So your homework, and what I think could be the most powerful thing in actually changing, whether you just sit there and say, yeah, 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 or you actually take action and eliminate that fear or that, that procrastination or the reluctance to do something we talked about before, is going out and brainstorming that idea. It's not gonna be perfect at first. You'll, you'll start to find different, uh, different steps along the way and different, and different layers that actually come into it. Uh, and brainstorm it as if it was someone else and then give it a go. See, can you take that first action step this week? If, even better, today. Because that's really what it's all about, taking action today. We said no longer it's just words, it has to be action. So that's us, that's module four, the workshop of how to face your fears and break through. We've told you about fears, we've told you how to understand your fears, and we showed you how you can break through from them. So uh, next week, part five, my favorite module. Uh, I think Chris is one of your favorites it as is, well. It is. Uh, really looking forward to that, but any final words are you? No, that's it. Just okay. guys, the only way to beat fear is through action. That's really it. Fantastic. All right. Nice. Thanks very much. Stay tuned for the fireside chats. Make sure you take action on it today and we'll see you next week. Cheers.